Hello, my name is Ken, and I want to welcome you back to Deep Waters. This podcast is brought to you by Applied Strengths Ministry, where we believe working together in our strengths is the effect of working out the will and calling of God in our lives. The title of this message is Sleeping with a Dumbbell. This is a multi-episode series in which this is episode 7 of 14. In the last message, we were defining words from the following scripture, Titus 2.5, to be discreet, chaste, homemakers, good, obedient to their own husbands, that the word of God may not be blasphemed. So let's D away, homemakers, a person who manages a household of his or her own family, especially as a principal occupation, a person employed to manage a household and do household chores for others as for the sick or elderly. Notice it says her own family manages the household of his or her own family. So we go to the word good, morally excellent, virtuous, righteous, pious, a good man, satisfactory in quality, quantity, or degree, a good teacher, good health, of high quality, excellent, profit or advantage, worth, benefit, what good will that do? We shall work for the common good, excellence or merit, kindness, to do good. The next word, obedient, obeying or willing to obey complying with or submissive to authority, an obedient son, blaspheme, to speak impiously or irrelevantly of God or sacred things, to speak evil of, slander, abuse, used without object, blaspheme, blaspheming, to speak irreverently of God or sacred things, utter impieties. So there you have it. It is the fun world of defining words so as to get a better understanding of what the Bible is saying. Now you are studying. Now you are being equipped for the work of ministry. You see how DCOM strengthened that Titus verse? I think that's just cool. Now in the spirit of teaching, I can find another word or so to define in each of the definitions. This is just one sentence of scripture, and it's only a partial list of definitions. In the definition of discrete alone, There are 10 more words that you could define. Now, I'm not saying that you should do this every time you read the Bible. In fact, I would prefer you just get through the Bible cover to cover before trying to do this type of study. Okay, back to the track. So you see that in the definitions, Paul is setting the bar way over Titus's head. If, as a woman, you just applied this one scripture to your life, your entire world could be different or could have been different. I'm not saying this to make you feel bad, but training you on how to train future disciples. You see, Jesus uses us fools who ran around like mindless dogs to serve others on his behalf. 1 Corinthians 1, 29 Our second chances can manifest in our future disciples that remain. So let's end this section on a woman with the wonderful possibilities of what kind of a woman you can be. Look at all the treasures listed in the scripture. Then it can all be yours with the asking, and then doing, and then forgiving yourself for messing up, and then for getting up and asking and doing again. I normally use the New King James Version for my scriptures, but I thought that the message might be a nice break. Eugene Peterson. Definitely more elegantly stated. Proverbs 31, 10, 31. A good woman is hard to find and worth far more than diamonds. Her husband trusts her without reserve, and never has a reason to regret it. Never spiteful. She treats him generously. She treats him generously all her life long. She shops around for the best yarns and cottons, and enjoys knitting and sewing. She likes a trade ship that sails to faraway places and brings back exotic surprises. She's up before dawn, preparing breakfast for her family, and organizing her day. She looks over a field and buys it. Then, with money she's put aside, plants a garden. First thing in the morning, she dresses for work, rolls up her sleeves, eager to get started. She senses the worth of her work is, in no hurry to call it quits for the day. She's skilled in the crafts of home and hearth, diligent in homemaking. She's quick to assist anyone in need, reaches out to help the poor, She doesn't worry about her family when it snows. Their winter clothes are all mended and ready to wear. 
She makes her own clothing and dresses in colorful linens and silks. Her husband is greatly respected when he deliberates with the city fathers. She designs gowns and sells them, brings a sweater she knits to the dress shop. Her clothes are well made and elegant. She always faces tomorrow with a smile. When she speaks, she has something worthwhile to say, and she always says it kindly. She keeps an eye on everyone in her household and keeps them all busy and productive. Her children respect and bless her. Her husband joins in with words of praise. Many women have done wonderful things, but you have outclassed them all. Charm can mislead and beauty soon fades. The woman to be admired and praised is the woman who lives in the fear of God. Give her everything she deserves. Adorn her life with praises. Husbands, and now all the wives say amen and yes, but I've tried not to totally let the men, such as I, off the hook, so that we move in the simplicity that God is working with both genders. Proverbs 18.22 He who finds a wife finds a good thing and obtains favor from the Lord. P.S. You can't find a good wife in nightclubs, not usually. You, us, we, typically want to find a good wife, while you, us, we, live in a pig pen of moral depravity. Hmm. I have chatted with a few guys that really had high standards for a wife. I congratulated them for setting the bar so high that they can now spend the rest of their lives doing pull-ups alone. I know. I thought I was going to be nicer to us men. I guess I will just shoot for growth. You cannot live like a turkey and expect to marry a dove. If you want a princess of a wife, you must be a prince of a fella. Equally yoked, period. You cannot live in the ghettos and expect to marry a New York City woman. I don't know what a New York City woman represents, so don't ask. But you get what I'm saying, right? You will attract what you are. Marriage is from God, and if you want favor from the Lord, and you are not gifted with the gift of celibacy, then find a wife. Ask him, he will give you one. Ephesians 5.24 Husbands, love your wives, just as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for her. Okay, it's over. I thought we could get through the scripture above with only a few scuff marks. But this one, are you kidding me? Love my wife as Jesus loves the church? How in the wide, wide world of sports are we going to accomplish such a feat? Like I stated above to the women, Men, we could live on this one scripture our entire lives. Jesus has endless and abounding love. He delivered his church from the hell journey with his very life. And now I am to love my wife with the same passion, dedication, and faultless commitment? If it were possible, I might ask my wife if she wanted to trade commandments. But then people might take that out of context. Okay, men. So it is not hopeless. But we do have our work cut out for us. So here's the first step. Give every last bit of your life to God. Stay near to him. Get some Holy Spirit along the way, all along the way, and know God thoroughly and without delay. Obey his every commandment and repent as necessary and required. Don't worry if you are like me. You will have some sin akin to hang our honors. Don't give up. God may be using it to form you into the man he intended you to be. Ephesians 5.28 so husbands ought to love their own wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself. Come on now. Am I the only one that thinks we got the difficult part of the deal? Do I love my body? Hmm. Am I a gym rat? Do I eat to my heart's content hoping that I can live past heart disease? Do I care for my personal hygiene now as I did when I was trying to draw her in? Do I brush my teeth at least daily? Flossing eliminates nuclear breath, by the way. If you're not sure you have it, ask a friend or a dog. Well, you may want to call them. Sorry, sideways again. You see, it's one or the other. You either love yourself to the degree that you are, your own majesty, or you have to let yourself go so much so that she never would have cast longing eyes in your direction if you look back then like you look now. The balance would be in the middle, always striving to live and walk in the spirit. I used to be a natural bodybuilder. I was at the gym five days a week for two or three hours nightly, for at least five years. I was damaged goods inside, so I spent a considerable amount of time trying to fix the wrong part of me. You cannot love your wife or neighbor past the level that you love yourself. Luke 10, 27. 
So without becoming conceited, learn to love you as God loves you. Then your wife can experience the same level of love from you. You see, if you hate yourself, you will hate others. Again, if you don't forgive yourself, you will be unable to forgive others. You see, if you see yourself as nothing more than a banana slug of a Christian, then you will expect others to also be banana slugs. The devil wins this battle every time. He is a slimy, slippery slug sucker. You are made in God's image and his likeness. Genesis 1, 26, 27, 2 Corinthians 4, 4. And now that you are authentically born again believer, act like it without thinking that you are all that in a bag of kale. Sorry, chips are out of fashion. Well, that's it for today. Remember playing the game called Slug Bug? That was a painful game as there are many, many bugs on the road these days. Remember, it's not what you find wrong or disagree with regarding these messages, but what you can take away from it. Together we can do more to impact the kingdom than if we work alone. Let's flip the script and kill, steal, and destroy the works of the enemy and create space for the light of light to shine through into people's lives. Plant a seed and click on the like and subscribe button. Let's build this ministry together. Thanks to see you next time in deep waters.